Hey, hi, hello, how you doing? Welcome back to my channel, Crazy Wear Beautiful Things. I don't like long intros, so hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you'll never miss another art tutorial or time lapse again. One quick thing before we get started this time, I know, I'm sorry. I'm currently a contestant in a billboard art contest by Fine Art America, the website I use to sell my artwork. I'd really appreciate it if you could vote for me and one of my art pieces. The link to vote is in the description. If I get 250 or more votes, I'll be a finalist in the contest and I'll be featured on Fine Art America's Instagram, so please vote. Alright, so enough of that. Let's get to what you came here for. Today I'm going to show you the grid method. This method will help you to get the proportions of your drawing right and also help you focus on all the little details instead of the whole picture at once. So, first you're going to need to find a reference photo for whatever you want to draw. And I bet this will come as a real shocker to you guys. I'm going to be drawing a person. What do you know? Who would have thought? Okay, you don't have to, but I would highly suggest printing out this reference photo just on normal, plain, boring old sheet of 8.5 by 11 paper. The next step is to take a look at the paper you'll be drawing the image on and decide how many boxes you want there to be horizontally for the grid. This paper I'm using here is 7 by 10 inches, and for this size I like to do about 9 boxes horizontally. You could even go up to 15 boxes for this size if you wanted to. The smaller the box, the smaller your focus, the more attention to detail you pay. So once you decide how many boxes you want, measure the width of your reference paper exactly. Take that number and divide it by the number of squares you choose. This will give you the measurement for each box. I like to use centimeters for this part because, well, 6.972 inches is not a number I want to deal with. This is art, not algebra. We don't want to make things more complicated than they have to be. So in my case, the resulting number is 2.5 centimeters. Place a ruler right under your reference photo and mark every two and a half centimeters or whatever your number is. The correct number of squares should stretch exactly the width of the page. Now turn your ruler vertical or your paper vertical and do the same thing on that side. You still use two and a half centimeters or whatever your number is on this side too because, well, I hope you would know this at your age, because I'm assuming you are in fact not a 5 month old baby, in which case if you are, where are your parents, then a square is the same length on all sides. Repeat this on your remaining two sides, being exact as possible. If you're not, you could end up with tilted sloping lines. Once you've done this, take your ruler and connect the marks from one side to the opposite, like so. On your reference photo, use a pen one that will make the line stand out. Here I'm using a red one. Do this to the other side and you'll have your grid. But you're not done yet. Now you have to draw the grid on your blank paper. Do the same as you did with your reference photo. Measure the width of your paper, divide that by the number of squares you choose, and mark every so many centimeters on all sides. But uh, make sure you do this grid very, very lightly and in pencil unless you want an unerasable grid cage trapping the person you're drawing. Once you lightly mark all the edges, use the ruler and connect the marks very, very lightly. You should barely be able to see them. Alright, so now you have a grid on both your reference photo and your blank paper. Next, what you're going to do is turn your reference photo upside down. This makes it harder for your brain to piece together what the image is and see it as the whole complete image. Instead, it helps you to see all the details of what is actually there instead of what your brain thinks the object looks like. To help with this even further, use your ruler and a couple of sheets of paper to cover up everything surrounding your first square. I like to start on the top left. But this is America and I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. Once you've covered the surrounding boxes, start drawing exactly what you see in the reference photo into your first square. After your first square, you'll want to cover the squares on the page you're drawing as well. But you do want to be able to see the edges of the surrounding squares so you can match up the edge of the square you're working on to the others. So, you can do this part several different ways. You can do the whole complete drawing like this, shading and blending and completely finishing each square separately 
or you can just use the grid to sketch out your drawing and then do the shading and blending afterwards. I like to sketch it out and add most of the shading with the grid and then blend it once I erase the grid. You should probably occasionally flip over your drawing and process and check to make sure it looks right. So, once you're finished, erase the grid and finish up your drawing, and ta-da! You're done, and your person doesn't look like a disproportionate, strangely shaded, deranged monster. Congratulations! Alright, that, my friends, was the grid method. I hope this helped you. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if it did. Maybe even share it with someone else it could help. Also, you can check out my other art tutorials right up here. As I mentioned before, I do have a lot of my work for sale on Fine Art America, which I'll link in the description if you want to check it out, and make sure to vote for me on the contest. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. Bye!